Welcome back to Vault. From little boys camping in the woods to mass shootings in Moscow, we have a lot to talk about. We've made it to episode seven. Fun fact, 90% of podcasts don't make it past episode seven. So one more episode and that's a huge milestone for us. We are currently sitting at 37 subscribers on YouTube and around 10,000 views in total on YouTube. I kind of stopped counting TikTok. TikTok does not love us right now. Uh, that being said, it's once again been a pretty hard week for us. Um, for some reason, our shorts just aren't getting any views. So if you have any tips, please comment down below. Real quick, let's throw those two extra stars on the chart and we'll keep on counting. Boom, one and two. You guys were one of our two new subscribers this week. Thank you so much. And uh, we're trying to get to 2,000. We're going to get a studio. All right. Let's get right into it. We're getting to the weekly recap. Starting off with Joe Rogan, the podfather himself. Joe Rogan interviewed Donnell Rawlings this week. They talked about all kinds of different bullshit as they always do, but to of the biggest takeaways of the podcast is um, Dono getting embarrassed after walking off the Kill Tony stage. So Dono was on to Kill Tony. If you're a follower of Joe Rogan, you're probably at least heard of the incident. Um, he was getting roasted. He really wasn't expecting to get roasted that hard. Um, he ended up walking off the stage. I mean, it's as easy as that. Well, when he was on Joe Rogan, he kind of called out Tony for lying and, and editing and doing all this bullshit. So Rogan decided to call up Tony and straighten things out. Uh, they ended up bringing up the clip. They had Tony still on the phone. And more or less what happened is Donnell got embarrassed and faked going to sushi so that he could get out of that roast fest. Um, that being said, he surprisingly, uh, he funnily enough called out Rogan for not watching his stand-up special. So go watch Donnell Rawlings' stand-up special. It's on Netflix. Um, it came out in about February. Uh, later on this week, Joe Rogan interviewed Coleman Hughes. Coleman Hughes is an investigative journalist, um, and he recently went on The View. So starting off the podcast, they were talking about Joe Rogan, and, or pff, they were talking about Joe Biden and his mental decline, and what's that? what that means in the upcoming election, what that has meant for the last four years of him being in his presidency, potentially having Kamala Harris as president, that would be crazy, or her even running, or the possibility possibilities of Kamala Harris running. Um, they went on to talk about Coleman's perspective on what happened to him on The View, so he was talking about things on The View, and if you watch anything with The View, those ladies are going to make anything into a talking point. So they just called him out for a bunch of bullshit and Coleman took it with stride and he was like, hey, look, you shouldn't attack me personally and this is taken away from the facts of the case, so let's get back into it. He just, he handled it super professionally and he actually got a lot of, um, of kudos from the comment section. So um, honestly, that's a win. Most people lose their cool on The View. Uh, Coleman wasn't one of them. Um, they then talked about the Book of Five Rings. This is a book that Joe Rogan has talked about for a really long time um, with all kinds of other guests. It stems from his martial arts background. He read it back when he was 18, 20 years old. Um, kind of just to paraphrase things, the Book of Five Rings is about a samurai who won a bunch of duels and how mastering different disciplines makes you better at everything. And so for him, you know, learning calligraphy, learning blacksmithing made him a better samurai. You know, learning boatmanship made him a better samurai. So they went and talked about that and how different aspects of their personal lives have translated to making their specific professions better. Uh, for instance, Joe Rogan really loves pool, but he doesn't make any money off of it. 
yet he thinks that it makes him a better podcaster or it makes him better at archery or, you know, you name it. It allows him to be able to focus. It allows him to be a disciplined person, to have precision. It also, he talks about it constantly. So he also brings pool to light and God knows how much he's helped the pool industry. So high tides raise all boats in that scenario. All right. Coleman is a world-class trumpet player on top of being a world-class journalist. Uh, so that's a little fun fact about Coleman. They also talked about um, the Israel-Palestine. Um, and they talked about how Israel is committing war crimes and who is truly um, in the right in this conflict. So is Palestine in the right? Is Israel in the right? Uh, who's doing what? He kind of laid out the whole situation. Um, it's definitely good to have different people's perspectives on this um, case because it is such a complicated matter. But Coleman pretty much said that Hamas is a lot like ISIS and Palestine is a lot like Iraq. So they're a terrorist cell operating in this country, committing war crimes, doing bad things. So we should expect Israel to retaliate in the ways they are trying to minimize civilian casualties, but still getting the job done. So that's kind of what they talked about for a little bit. Um, they also talked about Elon Musk's lawsuit on OpenAI. Um, I personally didn't know that Elon was ever invested in OpenAI, but nonetheless, OpenAI made an LLC, which was able to convert their nonprofit company into a profitable company. So... There's some other gray areas in um, this litigation. So it's up in the air because Elon originally invested and he wanted his investment money back because he invested in a nonprofit organization, which then ended up turning into a profitable organization, which Elon has stated he doesn't really mind, but that's not what he invested in. But then OpenAI fired back by releasing emails that pretty much stated that Elon knew about their conversion to a profitable company and Elon making his own AI behind the backs of open AI. So almost as if he was trying to learn as much as he could by investing in this company just so he could double, do, uh, double deal them. So um, definitely some gray area in this um, litigation and I guess we'll see how it pans out. On to modern wisdom. Modern Wisdom is one of the best, I would say, up-and-coming podcasts. I know they're definitely in the top 10 charts or so, but not, not world-class yet. So I really love Chris Williams, um, and I think he's doing amazing things. His transparency about... Um, his transparency about developing a podcast and his strategies... Um, have really been helpful for me and I'm trying to start this podcast. I mean, he didn't even really get popular until five years in. So he's on like his seventh year right now. So his sixth year was a big, big year for him. He went from like a hundred thousand subscribers to a million subscribers. Uh, you've probably seen a lot of his uh, shorts, um, his quotes go viral um, and his guests and his guest clips generally do go viral. And he's honestly, he's interviewed some really awesome people, but I would say, one of the biggest underrated podcasts of the year. So I love Chris Williams. Chris Williams, um, he interviewed Cal Newport. So um, Cal Newport is a professor. He just wrote a book on productivity. He, in the beginning stages of the podcast, Cal Newport had asked his comment section, his um, fan base, if you will, how to define productivity. So I wanted to give my definition of productivity because they couldn't, they couldn't settle on a definition. So my definition for productivity is the ability to accomplish a given goal in the least amount of steps possible. Now, I know some of you, P, some of you guys might say that well, that sounds a lot like efficiency. And I would argue that productivity and efficiency are one of the same. Not only do I pride myself on being a productive person, but I pride myself on being an efficient person. I don't want to waste my time and I definitely don't want to waste steps. 
Um, but they talked about productivity, what that means in the world, how the history of productivity has changed from the 60s to the 70s to the 80s to the 90s to the 2000s to the uh, housing crisis in 2008, and then how productivity has been redefined, and then what happened with productivity in the corporate environment in 2020 with COVID, how companies were putting malware on their employees' laptops to monitor their productivity, but it didn't actually mean that they were getting the results they needed. Uh, they talked about in the 1970s how productivity was defined on how many tasks you could do in the day and as you were only as product you were only as productive as the boss thought you were so it's never really been one of those easily defined things and it's always been a struggle between the boss who wants maximum productivity and the employees who are gaming the system so they definitely talked about the history what it means how to be a more productive person on to one of the most underrated podcasts, I think, out there, period. Conspiracy Social Club. Conspiracy Social Club is a podcast originally started with um, Sam Tripley and Brian Callen. But Brian has since left the podcast, as he tends to do, if any of you guys are Fighter and the Kid fans. Um... But they ended up getting a new co-host um, named Dylan. Dylan's awesome. Dylan's super funny. I actually kind of like the podcast better with Dylan than I do with Brian. Uh, but I wanted to shout out Conspiracy Social Club because I think it's an underrated podcast. It's so, so, so entertaining. I mean, Dylan and Sam are hilarious. Sam is a little hard to uh, deal with from time to time, but we'll give him credit because he is a pretty smart dude. So getting into it. Uh, Dylan shares a story about how he got sick, um, in a, in a, in a yurt. And while he was on the toilet in the bathroom, the lights had turned off and he had to sit there trying to wave his hands, trying to get the light sensor to turn back on, um, while he was in the dark. So it was kind of a little funny poop jokes. They went into all these kind of different shit stories, which if you got a sense of humor like mine, then you love that kind of stuff. Uh, Sam then talked about how Damar Hamlin's heart attack is a nonlinear warfare operation. So a nonlinear warfare operation is when, in this instance at least, when conspiracy theorists are getting too accurate. So the government coordinates a PSYOP to look exactly like a conspiracy so that the conspiracy theorists will go off and then they come out with what actually happened decrediting all the conspiracy theorists so that the government can have more power. Um, I guess it's a tactic that the CIA has used in other countries, and Sam is now accusing the CIA of using it here at home base. Um, they then talked about how the Moscow mass shooting is straight out of the October 6th Israel playbook, levering the event to encourage USA to join the conflict and start the beginning stages of World War III. So if you're following anything with geopolitical news, Moscow had a mass shooting. Um, and what Sam is trying to point out is he thinks this mass shooting is trying to be blamed on Israel so that Israel will put pressure on the USA to enter the Ukraine-Russia conflict. And then if the USA physically enters the Ukraine-Russia conflict, then that means everybody else is going to have to enter the Ukraine-Russia conflict, and that starts World War III. So what Sam is accusing the United States of doing is pretty much faking a Pearl Harbor. He's trying to fake this big event that would then leverage us and give us an excuse to join this war. Um, but if you ask conspiracy theorists, everything like this that happens is an excuse for the United States to go to war. Honestly, it might be true. Maybe us Americans just aren't falling for it anymore. On to happier news. Two bears, one cave. We love Tom and Bert. Tom and Bert are the best. So Bert and Tom interviewed Dave Attell. Dave Attell just released his first stand-up special in like 30 years. I mean, 
the godfather of comedy, one of the best that ever did it. Every stand-up comedian looks up to David Tell. We're so glad that he's back in the comedy sphere. Uh, they talked about the early days of comedy and what it was like being one of the first dirty comics. So David Tell has always been a dirty comedian, but in the 1980s, all the way up until about the 90s or so, dirty comedy just wasn't in. No one wanted to hear it. It wasn't going to get you a sitcom. It wasn't going to get you a stand-up special. It wasn't going to get you a lot of fans because of all the Puritans. Um, and even in the 70s, some stand-up comedians were legally being charged because they would cuss on stage or because they had profanity on stage or things like that. So they talked about those early stages, what it was like for Dave Attell to get through that. Sadly for Dave, when he entered the stand-up comedy scene, it was at the end of the 1970s boom of stand-up comedy. So he had to sit through the 80s where it was stand-up comedy was pretty dead before the 1990s boom of stand-up comedy that we're still sitting in today. So they talked about that perspective, what it was like to get through that purging, um, how stand-up comedians were a little bit more grizzled at the time and how they've loosened up over time. All right. They then talked about drinking on a plane and how Bert's dad was one of the first people who started his drink, his plane drinking. So when Bert was 18, he was very anxious on a flight. His dad got him a couple of drinks, got him drunk on the plane. And that started Bert's aviation alcoholism. So if you know anything about Bert, he drinks. He's an avid drinker of uh, on planes, and flying gives him a lot of anxiety. So first time we've ever really heard the origins of that story. So thanks, Bert's dad. Um, I did want to make a note that Dave has never drank on a plane. So he's drank in private, but he's never drank on commercial. They talked about it. I wanted to throw it in on the notes. Um, it is important to note. Hmm. It is important to note that Tom pretty much said nothing the whole podcast. Honestly, no surprise there. When Tom doesn't want to talk, he doesn't fucking talk. All right. On to everyone's favorite, second favorite podcast this past weekend. Uh, Theo interviewed Jameis Winston, which honestly was a really cool and fun interview. Jameis Winston, I think, was a backup quarterback for a really long time. He then became a first-string quarterback and I think recently has been transferred. So we'll kind of get into it here. So Jameis celebrated his fourth anniversary at the Four Seasons. Quote, in his words, he said, Four Seasons at the Four Seasons. So I guess that's that's a thing. I don't know. Uh, they talked about Jameis's animals and the different aspects of hood animals, cats, uh, light bugs and such. Um, so they talked about his cat. They talked about his dog. They talked about going and catching light bugs out in the yard, what that meant for his childhood, how it has changed, how light bugs don't even exist in Louisiana as much anymore because everything's getting so cityified. Um, so Theo kind of... Uh, he got to relate with Jameis on the on the animal subject, which was uh, it was kind of fun and kind of cool. They're from similar areas, I think, across the same lake from each other or, or something like that. Um, they also talked about what it is like to move franchise and Jameis's views on being viewed. Jameis's views on being viewed as an investment and how aging in the league affects that opportunity. So he kind of talked about how. When you are a starter in the NFL, you're not viewed really as a person. You're viewed as money and what that means for a franchise and then what that means for getting traded through that franchise and how you have to be able to leverage yourself as an investment instead of a person with skills. Um, Theo talked about how intense Drew Brees is and Jameis shared um what he learned from playing with drew uh drew Brees was so intentional with his actions Jameis said he might have only used salt and pepper one time the whole time they played together so drew Brees, everything he did was intentional he thought out he had a game plan and he executed and because of that Jameis says he was an incredible leader but also 
super serious, super dedicated, don't get in this guy's way kind of thing. Um, it is key to note Jameis was extremely optimistic and kind the whole interview. So he was actually really fun. They did jokes. Jameis's perspective on life and struggle and getting through hard times in his life was enlightening and fun and inspiring. And uh, Jameis definitely has a fan in me now. So it worked. On to Time Suck. Time Suck is a podcast that is near and dear to my heart. Um, Dan Cummins, the host of that podcast, is a stand-up comedian. He lives in Coeur d'Alene, which is pretty cool because that's really close to Spokane. I hope one day I can get Dan Cummins on the podcast. But even cooler, he grew up in Riggins, Idaho. I grew up in Southern Idaho. So I've been listening to his podcast since I was like sixth grade. And I love Dan Cummins. And I listen to a lot of his episodes. And I can't wait to talk to him with you guys on these episodes going forward. All right, let's break it down. Time suck. It was the Mormon Mansons. So if you know anything about Marilyn Manson and the Manson family, they killed a bunch of celebrities. They were a cult. Well, this is the Mormon version of it. So Dan Cummins opens up the podcast talking about the history of blood atonement and the Mormon religion. He then starts his timeline with the beginning of his family moving to Mexico to start a cult in the, 19, in the early 1900s. Dan then shares the timeline of how Irville, the leader of this cult, went about making and managing the cult before getting into the blood atonement murders that inevitably ended up happening. So, first, they destroyed his brother's church, a rival cult, by burning it to the ground, resulting in 19 injuries and two murders via mass shooting gallery as people evacuated the flaming building. So... About halfway down the timeline, this cult ended up splitting. So it was two brothers who inherited this cult from their father in Mexico. The cult ended up splitting because they couldn't decide on who the true Messiah was. But Irvin, the, I guess, protagonist of this episode, um, was a lot more radical than his brother. And when people stepped on him or crossed him or he thought that they were wrong he murdered them through blood atonement um so in this case he went over to his brother's church burnt it to the ground as people were evacuating shot them dead additional notes Irvin once ordered his own people to hunt and kill his daughter so she was pregnant she was on the run and he told them to go kill her um after finishing everything Irvin. After finishing everything, Irvin had killed a total of at least 20 people. This was an absolute insane story and podcast, and it just kept on getting crazier the longer you listen. So definitely go check out the most recent video of Time Suck. Um, it's, worth, it's worth a listen for sure. Alrighty, on to even more murderous stories. Small Town Murder. Small Town Murder is two comedians that break down... Small Town Murders, they're a true crime podcast, so if you like true crime podcasts and comedy, this is the place for you. All right, we are talking about Baileytown, Tennessee. The podcast starts off talking about a girl who has a 78 IQ and started doing drugs at 13, and at some point said her soul got pregnant. So, obviously we know she's a crazy lady. She's dumb, she thinks her soul's getting pregnant. Not a physical body, only her soul. So I don't know how a soul gets pregnant, Hopefully not by a demon, uh, but we never find out the answer to that question. All right. Uh, later in her life, around 18, she picked up one of her ex-boyfriends at a hotel and started to travel across the country. While traveling, some missionaries tried to, well, convert them and talk to them. Um, when the ex kidnapped the whole family and later murdered everyone in the family except the two-year-old baby. So the two-year-old baby lived um was injured was rescued later um but everybody else in the family was shot dead by this crazy ex i do want to note that the crazy ex was also 14 and yes she was 18. um so just a little additional note there they then fled to mexico where they got arrested and expedited back to the united states where they faced trial 
um, all participating members received life without parole. And so this happened in the early 2000s. So they're all still in jail. All right. Same guys, different podcast, Crime and Sports. This episode of Crime and Sports is about Rashawn Jones, a guy who was an MMA fighter, but somehow was able to get a marketing degree and had three felonies all at the same time. He won his first MMA fight, lost his second match, and ended his career with a 2-11 and 11 record. So not a great MMA fighter. Um, he later killed two people while robbing a laundromat. And that's kind of the gist of that. They go into all kinds of different details, but to, uh, to mitigate spoilers, I won't tell you too much. If you love sports and you love crime and you love comedy, that's the place for you. Go check out Crime and Sports. Alrighty, on to one of my personal favorite podcasts, A Tacos Anonymous. Tacos Anonymous is with uh, Nick and Danny, two YouTubers that two of my favorite YouTubers right now, and their podcast is just a good time start to finish. So if you like anime and you like a good time, go check out those two, Mad Entertaining. So Danny and Nick start off the podcast strong with how Judith would be Jesus's most powerful JJK summings. Um, so they related Judith and Jesus to Maharaga and um, I don't remember, but the main antagonist of JJK. So, funny bit. Um, I definitely enjoyed it. They then went off about hot e-boy Jesus. So, a lot of Jesus commentary at the beginning of this podcast. Uh, still super funny. Um, I think Danny even looked up what a hot e-boy Jesus would look like. Uh, they transitioned into Joe Biden shaking chickens, forcing them to lay eggs for Easter. Uh, this just starts the antics off for these two. At some point, they talked about Joe Biden laying lizard eggs on children's heads. Uh, and then they transitioned on to who they would kill with the Death Note and so much more. Uh, they touched on solo leveling, has been hotel, roadhouse, the quiet on set documentary, Mashal, and My Hero Academia. Um, they then went on to their bits and their games and rounding off the rest of the podcast. But if you like anime, you think these guys are talking about some interesting stuff or even some funny stuff, go check those guys out. All right, on to one more Tom Segura, your mom's house. I love your mom's house. I love Tom. I love Christina. It's another one of those just a good time from start to finish kind of podcasts. So, excuse me there. Starting things off, Tom looks at John's, John and Moose and Tom's nose have grown far too much. So, Christina had related Tom to John Amos and had said that Tom's nose is way too big. Um... They then went into Black Lives Matter and J.K. JK Rowling being a turf. Uh, they talked about Dominican baseball players slapping each other with their dicks in the locker rooms and how other baseball players completely avoid Dominicans for that reason. Um, they watched a video about a grandma with walking farts or taking fart walks. Um, their guest was Brian Simpson. Brian Simpson started off the conversation talking about his German Shepherd, or the talking about if German Shepherds are inherently racist. Uh, Brian Simpson is a cat guy. Um, and when your children break things, so they then talked about when your children break things, just throw away. Man, I can't read all of a sudden. When your children break things, just throw money at the problem. Having two boys destroys everything in your house, your emotions, and each other. Brian Simpson's stand-up special just came out on Netflix, so go check it out. And finally, if we fits, we sits. And where are the bodies, Garth? On to Flagrant. So, lots of comedians podcasts this week, but I promise you we'll get into more diverse subjects in later weeks and later in this episode. 
All righty. So opening strong by talking about Joe Biden declaring Easter is now Trans Visibility Day. Uh, they go on to talk about why Ben Shapiro fired Candace Owens, how Ben Shapiro rose to power, and why he has started to fall, why Ben Shapiro is no longer a free speech absolutist. Um, they talked about... They touched on Diddy, and Andrew talked about his new joke he just tried out at his recent comedy festival. Um, they also talked about how Drake's new concerts are uniquely intimate. They talked about Kendrick Lamar and Dr Drake's beef and possible diss track and who between the two of them has more to lose. Uh, they talked about, or sorry, it's important to note that Miles was drooling on his shirt and didn't do anything. So if you saw that podcast, you know that Andrew called out Miles. So little inside joke between me and you. Um, they then talked about how Trump's indictment is a hit piece and how his real estate tactics are a common occurrence. Um, and then Christ is king, fried chicken is queen. If you know, you know. To the Sean Ryan show, and I have probably one too many notes on this one. Sean Ryan interviewed Randall Carlson. Randall Carlson. Uh, they talked about the efficacy of geology and how Troy and how Troy was discovered. Troy was discovered from rumors and myths. Sorry, it's geomythology. So they talked about the efficacy of geomythology and how Troy was discovered, and Troy was discovered from rumors and myths. Rendell Carlson does not know how the ancient Egypts moved their massive stones, but his leading theory is levitation via frequency and vibration. They then talked about the Tuntus Tunguska event, and they talked about the Younger Dryas, and why it was named after a flower, because that flower likes cold weather, and was prevalent... Sorry. They, they, talk, they then talked about the Younger Dryas, and why it is named after a flower. Because that flower likes cold weather and was prevalent during one of the Ice Age. Then disappeared and then came back. And that's how we found out about the Younger Dryas. Um, they talked about how three-fourths of all species went extinct at some point in time. And the safest place on Earth during these meteoric events is actually Africa. Um, they talked about children who grow up with regular exposure to nature are less likely to have a mental disorder, um, up to about 90% reduction. Uh, they then talked about all kinds of figures in history events and their relationships with reoccurring numbers. Randall started talking about his first experience with dowsers, the first time he ever got to use a dowser, and he seems to think that humans can detect changes in the geomagnetic field. They also talked about um, about a storm generator Randall has been working um, with recently, and so many more. I mean, I I took a decent amount of notes, but this is a, like a three hour podcast, and I mean, I swear to God, Randall just talked about every theory he's ever had ever, and the man's been in geomythology for 40, 50 years now. So way too much to just break down on this review podcast. Um, but if you like Randall Carlson, go check it out. It definitely was relieving to see him without Graham Hancock because Graham Hancock usually does kind of steal the show and Randall Carlson likes to take the backstage on things. So it's nice to see him without Graham Hancock and getting his personal um, thoughts and experiences on things. And, I think he's a lot more credible than Graham Hancock, so I hope to see him on solo interviews more often. On to the Jocko podcast. So Jocko and Echo talked about what makes conflict. Echo talked about being in a twin study with his brother. Um, Jocko shares what it's like being in a room with 80, other, 80 others during boot camp. They then took most of the podcast analyzing this book about a summer camp of boys in an experiment 
about group dynamics and how to resolve conflict or warring tribes. Sorry, conflict of warring tribes. After finishing the book, Jocko and Echo break down human nature and how cults start and how extreme ownership can help you from always wanting to find a tribe and falling into someone else's trap. An additional note, something the book touches on and Jocko and Echo talk about is that the groups where the most people made decisions outperformed groups where only one leader made decisions for everyone. So, um, just breaking down leadership. We know Jocko. We love Jocko. That's completely on par with him, brand, his brand. Um, on to the Huberman Lab. Huberman interviewed Matthew Walker, a sleep scientist. They talked about non-REM non -REM sleep. They talked about the ratio of REM to non-REM is not stable and changes throughout the night. Uh, the first half of the night, but you get more consistent REM throughout the second half of the night. On average, sorry, men on average will have a 15 to 20 minute longer sleep cycle than women. Um, if you wake up and feel like you want to sleep, go back to sleep. But if you are still up after about 20 minutes, it's a good idea just to get up. Uh, they talked about deep sleep brain waves, improve your immune systems and regulate your metabolic systems. Um, in dreams where you feel like you can fly, this is because your body's loss of, and this is a long word, so bear with me here, proprioception. So proprioception is pretty much your loss of, car, of bodily awareness, of touch and feel and where your limbs are in proportion to each other. So when you're having dreams of flying, it's because you're, you have a loss of proprioception. They then talked about apnea. They talked about how apnea, as in sleep apnea, literally means absent of breath. So sleep apnea, or the apnea part of sleep apnea, means absent of. So apnea in sleep is absent of breath. Um, yawning is when your brain is getting too warm, they then talked about, um, or sorry, they then talked about how when you're yawning, it's because your brain is getting too warm. And these are just a few of the hundreds of topics these two talked about. Uh, this is a three hour podcast. And I just wanted to know um, the first part. I just wanted to know this is a, this is the first part of a six part series on sleep. So for the next six weeks, Andrew is going to be releasing more and more episodes on sleep, sleep studies, and everything sleep. All righty. That ends our weekly recap. And now on to, drumroll please, the podcast of the week. We are awarding the podcast of the week to Otakos Anonymous. Okay, I know it sounds weird. I know it's anime. Not everybody loves it. But I do. These guys are mad entertaining. They're my two favorite YouTubers right now. And honestly, it's just a good time from start to finish. Yeah. Do they only have like 300,000 subscribers? Yes. Are they equally, if not more funny at times than your mom house? Are they equally, if not more funny at times than your mom's house? 100%. I think these guys are underrated. I think that limiting themselves only to anime has not done their skills and their comedic relief justice. And I want to tell more people about it. I love this podcast. So the podcast of the week goes to Otakos Anonymous. Um, now on to, have you heard about, have you guys heard about Blurry Creatures? Blurry Creatures is a podcast all about, well, blurry creatures. It's mythology and the um cryptids around the world and how no one can ever get a solid video of these creatures so they break things down things like bigfoot they interview authors about nephilim they interview authors about nessie so blurry creatures is all about the mystic the well the creatures that are Kind of blurry on camera. 
And um, that rounds out the podcast for today. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And that's all, folks.